Same technique. Yeah. So there's no limit to how many exactly. variations you can do. Now somebody out there that has a better grasp of chord structures than I do um, can do the same technique. Because that's why you get into a spot with your hands where they do a certain thing and you do it really well. A little bit of variation, you can change it around. So once you've got a real good technique move, learn how to make it more musical. Right. Where a lot of guys get this technique thing, and they just do technique, 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 you know, all over the place. We realize that um, that's, that's like your building block. Like when I first did hammer-ons and stuff like that, I, I, after a while I realized, oh, you can, wow, you can move that around, that hand, and you can move this hand around too. You can do extra finger. So this pretty soon, uh, you know, the it whole explodes. world, everybody knows what the hammer-ons are all over the place. Right. So um, the same idea with the... Or what about the area of string bending? You'd mentioned that briefly, but could you get a little bit more in-depth about your technique, how you do it, and um, tips on executing? Yeah, for a bass player to bend strings, a lot of guys don't do it because the bass is a heavy, heavy strings, but... Uh, I, I have a custom set, and I have the uh, G string a little tiny bit lighter, just a tiny bit, uh, two thousandths of an inch, I think is what it is. And the E string is a little heavier, because the E string usually is very floppy on, on any given set of strings. So if I, to bend strings, like a, I'll always uh, try to get as many fingers on that string as I can, and have them all bend. So, so, that, so that it takes all the pressure, as you can see little holes that are created, if I, if I hold this now for a second here, see little holes that are created in my fingertips. Groovy. But, yeah, very groovy. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, those little groovy grooves there, um, they uh, indicate that the, the um, pressure is equally distributed over all, th all three fingers. If you're just doing it with one, you'd have all that pressure pushing on one finger, which may be uncomfortable. Some guys probably can do it that have a lot stronger hands than I do. Sometimes I'll even get all four behind all there. All four, even. But, uh -huh. but it, what I generally tend to do when, when I get behind, get behind something like that, yeah, I, I try to keep as many fingers on it, and I kind of roll my fingers down and push it up that way. Some movement's coming from the wrist, apparently, too. Uh, yeah, um, I'm actually, good point, because I never even realized that. I'm, it's kind of a leveraging, almost. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, kind of the vibrato part comes from that. Uh, I have these top frets scalloped on on these bases too to make, make a, like a little easier to get underneath there because on these ah. higher notes we're going to need a lot of pressure to, to bend them up. I tend to to bend down underneath and push up. Um, so, so you're, you're in the scalloped area. Yeah, for these here. It's not always necessary to do that. I just happen to do that for myself. It's it, a little bit more comfortable? It seemed it. You know, yeah. it, seems, it seems like it makes it because you don't hit any wood there like you would down here. Here that wood mm -hmm. scraping up against it. Because I do a lot of high bends on the bass to try and get it to the highest note you can, can, uh, you can get out of the instrument. So um, generally the G string gets bent up. The D string is optional. <laughs> I don't do too much bending on the D string, as, uh, obviously. And then uh, the A and the E are bent down. And now the E string, you can really... Boy, that is, that's quite a, quite a long ways. So that's, it's out of tune, too, now. But, but you can bend the E string quite a bit. So the lower strings are looser by nature, and the higher strings are tighter. So you kind of have to get underneath these and you can pull these down. In the last video, you mentioned a little bit about pinch harmonics, but since then you've elaborated a bit on them, like in the Blame It on My Youth break that you play. It almost sounds like a guitar. Can yeah. you talk a little bit more in depth about the way you play artificial pinch harmonics? Yeah, like uh, as I said in the last video, I guess there's no way to actually hear them now if you hear the record. A lot of it is limited. You can't really do a lot of fast picking because you got to, it's about as fast as you'll get, as I'll get anyway. Somebody else probably just has it. But anywhere on the string, there's a harmonic in there. So when you're playing live, you get that real. 
it's like a, you know our, our sound man for, in, in our shows uses that to kind of judge where uh -huh. the bass becomes sometimes the second guitar for th moves like that while Paul's playing the chords and stuff. I'm doing that. What would it sound like if you played it without the harmonics, just for contrast? And, and then with the harmonics? Yeah. Something like that. Makes it much more interesting. Yeah, because it's colorful. A, if you don't really need the note for a, uh, a root or yeah, something. Yeah, to, to establish. And it's also, if you did play like that, it kind of gets some a lot of frequencies there. So we just kind of cut out the low frequencies and just go for the real high ones. Again. So it doesn't get in the way of what the guitar is doing or what the singer's singing. Anyway. So Are you going for specific placement, though, when you play that? Or? I think I, I accidentally get specific placement because what I do is um, my hand's here, so when I go below this pickup, it's kind ah. of a, Visualize against the pickup in relation to the pickup. Uh, it's just kind of a natural thing that my hand uh -huh. falls it because you can't do it over the pickup because there's not enough room to reach underneath. And here, this big pickup's in my way, so we have one other option <laughs> right here. So that's kind of that's where it kind of ends up. Natural See, selection, kind of. Yeah, that's that's great. I've seen you do something that I've never seen any other bass player do, and that's bend the neck while mm -hmm. you're playing it. Could you give us a little bit of a rundown of what you do? Yeah, um, I think I first got that. I'm, I'm sure a lot of other guys do it. Maybe you got to get out and see more bass players. There, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think I got it originally from uh, Pete Townsend. Because like the beginning of uh, Don't Get Fooled Again. See him shake his neck around a little bit live. And I think, uh -huh. God, it, it's got to work on bass, force and guitar. You know, that's generally the rule of thumb. So uh, a lot of times when I do like a harmonic, I'll just kind of... And bend it, and actually you hit the low note. Okay, it's quite it a, down to a D. Yeah. But we got to be careful uh, how your bass is connected here. And now, what's the actual mechanics behind what's going on? A lot of it has to do with how the strap is together. That's uh -huh. why I used to stretch my strap out all the time. I'd be playing, everything would be fine, like I talked about again in the first video, not to be redundant, but um, how the, if the strap would change its size, my, uh, all the, the angles of my hand would change as the bass moved down away from me as the strap got longer. Uh -huh. The reason why the strap was getting longer is so I was doing all these. So what I'm doing is the strap goes all the way around me, connects here and here, and I'm pushing up against it, and this is the that's fulcrum. That's holding in place. Wow, that's quite a change. You can really see the strings go away. Far down the neck, actually. Boy, this broke right now, I think. <laughs> so there's a lot, it's kind of a way to s simulate, I was going to say stimulate, simulate the vibrato arm. Uh -huh. We used to do like, uh, like any Hendrix kind of... Uh, Uh -huh. There's so some of that in the NV solo too. As a matter of fact, at one point you hear, you hear it going crunch, crunch. It's actually the wood and the screw kind of starting to pop out of the bass because right? I was at the, in the heat of the moment there. I was pushing really hard on the bass. Sometimes live, I'll just push as hard as I can. And uh, the only thing wrong with it though is it sometimes picks the strings up off the pick, off the, or moves them up away from the pickup so it gets, doesn't, it's not as quite as loud. Uh -huh.